This is take two of this video because I got halfway through the first take and realized that I had actually changed a lot of things in this setup uh, several weeks ago and totally forgot that I had done them. And um, I had a lot of troubleshooting to do to get things back on the right network so that the VMs could talk to each other. Uh, but it looks like I have everything set up and running, and we are all back to normal. PFSense um, is handing out IP addresses. Um, Ubuntu is running Samba AD, and the Windows 10 machine can talk to everything, and, and, and we're all happy here now. So um, the reason that I'm making this video, uh, I, I guess I'll move into that part now, is because um, the last video that I did about you know installing and configuring and setting up Samba Active Directory and joining Windows 10 machines to it um, uh, and, and sort of like the, the whole setup I believe that was a long long video but uh, you know thanks to everyone who watched that by the way and made it through to the end um, you know kudos to you for that and, and thanks for your messages that you made it through um, but in that video that I did um, it, the people that watched, I got a, a few questions about, well, what would happen if I lost the administrator password or what if it was forgotten? Um, what if the administrator account expires, the password expires, the administrator account gets disabled? Um, just a lot of questions about the administrator account. Uh, and I think there's so many questions about that because, um, you know, generally speaking, uh, when you do a Windows server setup and install Active Directory, uh, you kind of deal with the administrator account a lot. And, and that's sort of like the, the go-to account um, that everyone just knows is there and exists. And with Samba running an Active Directory uh, you know, server on Ubuntu, it's, you, you deal with root and other Linux accounts you know, maybe more often in the setup and the maintenance of the server. And I think it's a little confusing for people when you know, uh, you're talking about Active Directory and, and that running on Linux. And uh, I, I, I know that when, when I first started you know, getting into this and, and dealing with this on a regular basis, uh, it sort of blew my mind as well. I, I was like, what, this, how is this possible? How are we you know, using the RSAT toolkit on a Linux server uh, and not paying, you know, a, a Microsoft, um, you know, server uh, license fee and, and and all of that, and it really does take a little while to sort of wrap your your head around exactly what's going on here, um, and and how different it is. And um, you know, if there's one thing that's for sure, it is different as far as the. Um, the setup and uh, maintenance of the server being a Linux server instead of a Windows server. So we are going to just uh, really quickly, uh, after all of that rambling, um, I'm really quickly going to show you what would happen if um, you thought the password for your administrator account in Active Directory was... Um, uh, password one two three four five six okay obviously never use that password in production that's that's just terrible uh, but as you see um, well you didn't see me type that in the keyboard but take my word for it I typed in password one two three four five six and it did not work um, but if we want to change the password to that password then we can do that on the Linux server. And so what we'll do is we'll sign in as root with the password that we do know. Uh, hopefully you do know the, the password for the root account. Um, if not, it's, it's easy enough to change. Uh, it's just more steps you're gonna have to do and we're not gonna cover that right now. But let's say you do know the root password and you signed into your Linux computer and um, or your, uh, your, your server and you just want to run Samba tool, user set password, and then the username of the account that you want to set the password for. And in our case, it's going to be administrator. So this would work for any account if you happened to um, you know, want to change a password this way. 
Um, I guess it's just totally dependent on, you know, what you want to do. Maybe you would already have the console pulled up uh, to this server and it would uh, be quick access for you. Um, I would probably more than likely um, just load the RSET toolkit and, you know, right click the account and click reset password and, and go that route. This would also work as well. It just, you know, totally depends on what you want to do. So we'll press enter. New password is going to be password one, two, three, four, five, six with a capital P for password requirements, for strength requirements. If you try just a lowercase password, uh, lowercase p, it probably is not going to work. It's going to complain and say, hey, that's not complex enough. The, uh, the hackers will guess that too easily, but capital P, no, no one will ever guess that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go back to the Windows machine and just like magic, this is where it all goes horribly wrong. Password one, two, three, four, five, six. We're being told welcome and we're signed in. So that is how you change a password for an existing user in uh, a Samba Active Directory environment. If you, uh, for whatever reason, don't know the administrator password to the AD environment, but you do know the root password of the, uh, of the, the Linux server, then that's a quick, simple solution. Um, and, and like I said before, if the administrator account expires or the, the password expires or, you know, whatever, um, it doesn't really affect, you know, any other users signing into the system. Um, they're really only going to notice a problem if the server goes down and their credentials are not, you know, cached uh, because of a previous login. That's where they're going to really see a, an instant problem is if the server's down and you have a new user and they've never signed, in, signed into a computer before and they try to sign in, it's, it's not going to work. All right, so... Uh, and then obviously, if your server does go down, you want to get it back online as soon as possible because other random things that Active Directory needs, um, let's see, uh, you know, any other thing that would be in the test company domain, you know, Active Directory, Active Directory relies heavily on DNS. Wow, try saying that three times fast. Pretty crazy. Um, DNS is used very heavily with Active Directory, you know, for uh, computer names, uh, accounts, user accounts, all that fun stuff. The, the sysvol, um, you can go on and on and on of things that, uh, you know, are, are required for DNS uh, or the DNS entries that are required for Active Directory to work. Um, you know, here's just a, a quick example of... <laughs> Some of the things that, uh, uh, and this is a this is a base bare bones like really nothing has been added to this Active Directory uh, domain yet, uh, which which is um, kind of nice having a, a brand new setup. Of course, it's all just for testing anyway. It's never going to be in production, but um, you can see there's lots and lots of forward lookup zones even on a fresh install with basically nothing added yet, except for this one this one computer. So um, that's pretty much it for uh, you know setting a password. I think I've already said that two or three times now, but uh, if you have any other questions, I, uh, you know, feel free to uh, leave a comment. A lot of people are good about answering in the comment section if they, if they know, um, sometimes even if they don't really know. But uh, I appreciate all of the help that the viewers are doing for um, other viewers, fellow viewers. And, um, you know, when they ask a question, sometimes people will, will jump right in and, and, and have an opinion or a thought or a solution for them. And it's, it's great to see that. It's great to see people uh, actually, you know, communicating, collaborating and, and figuring things out um, and, and helping each other out. Very great. Very cool. Thanks for watching and, um, you know, let me know what other videos you would like to see. I know we've covered PFSense fairly heavily at this point. Um, 
we we've done a little bit of uh, you know Samba and Active Directory. We could probably go a little bit further with Active Directory, um, but uh, I, I guess we'll just have to see where we end up going with that. But thanks for watching again. Uh, it's much appreciated, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.